Hello and welcome to this lesson on acceleration, which is part of the forces topic in GCSE Separate Science Physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to try and define and calculate acceleration. So if we've been successful and learned in this lesson, we should be able to define the term acceleration, calculate the acceleration of an object and calculate using something called SUVAT. So we're going to be looking at the following part of the AQA physics specification, 4.5.6.1.3 velocity and we're going to be looking at 4.5.6.1.5 acceleration. So acceleration is the change in velocity over a certain time. Now we should be aware that velocity is both a speed and a direction. So this means an acceleration is either a change in speed or a change in direction. So because you've got a direction in your acceleration quantity, this means that acceleration like velocity is a vector quantity. Now we can calculate acceleration with the following equation. Acceleration in meters per second squared is equal to the change in velocity in meters per second divided by the time taken for the change in seconds. Now we can also write this equation in a different format. We can say that acceleration in meters per second squared is equal to the final velocity in meters per second minus the initial velocity in meters per second all over the time taken in seconds. Now this is just the same equation written in different ways because the change in velocity is also the final velocity minus the initial velocity. So this equation needs to be memorized for your examinations moving forward. Now as acceleration is a change in velocity divided by time, this means the units of acceleration are meters per second divided by seconds, which is meters per second squared. So it can be written as either m slash s slash s, m slash s squared, or m s to the minus two. Any of those notations is fine for the unit of acceleration, and we pronounce this unit as meters per second squared. Now, a fundamental rule of physics states that an acceleration is caused by a resultant force. No resultant force, no acceleration. Now, this is in fact Newton's first law of motion. You need to have and a resultant force to cause an acceleration. So let's just summarize everything we've covered so far. Acceleration is the change in velocity over a certain time. So acceleration in meters per second squared is equal to the change in velocity in meters per second divided by the time taken for the change in seconds. Or you could say acceleration in meters per second squared is equal to the final velocity in meters per second minus the initial velocity in meters per second divided by time taken in seconds. Now the unit of acceleration is meters per second squared and acceleration can only occur when there's a resultant force acting on the object. So, as we know that acceleration is a change in velocity over time, and that velocity is a speed with a direction, this means that if you are changing your speed, you are changing your velocity, so you are accelerating. And this requires a resultant force to do this. Now, this idea of changing speed to accelerate is the most commonly thought of method of acceleration. Now, in this context, a negative value of acceleration could mean a decrease in the speed of the object. But there's a second way in which you can accelerate, because as velocity is a speed with a direction, if you change direction, you change velocity, so you are accelerating. And again, this requires a resultant force to do this. Now, in this context, a negative acceleration could be the object moving in the opposite direction. Now, you can only work out if the negative term means a decrease in speed or a change in direction by looking at the information given in the puzzle. Now to produce either a change in speed or a change in direction, a resultant force is needed. Now, what we can do is SUVAT equations or the equations of motion can be used to work out values of an object moving when an object has constant acceleration. Now there are two equations of motion which you've got to be able to use in GCSE physics. Now these equations are sometimes termed 
um, the SUVAT equations due to the possible terms that can be found in the equations. So what we know is that displacement is given the value S, initial velocity is given the symbol U, final velocity is given the symbol V, acceleration is given the symbol A, and time is given the symbol T. So we can use these S, U, V, A and T to construct some equations to work out values of an object moving when an object has constant acceleration. Now remember, it's important to note that in the context of SUVAT, that S stands for displacement not speed whilst d would stand for distance traveled remember displacement is a vector quantity and it is the straight line distance between the starting point of a journey and the end point of a journey whilst the distance traveled is just how far an object is moved overall in its particular journey now there are two equations of motion which you've got to be able to use in GCSE physics and there are two further equations of motion which are only covered in a level physics so let's look at the first equation that is acceleration is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity over time we can pop our units in as shown here and we can write it in a simple form a is equal to v minus u over t now this equation must be memorized for your examination now the second equation is the equation that final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared is equal to 2 times by acceleration times by displacement once again we can place the units into the equation. Now we can write this out in symbol form where we can say v squared minus u squared equals 2 times by a times by s. Now this equation does not need to be memorized but it will be given to you in your equation book or equation sheet for your exam. So if you're doing a higher tier paper you will have to rearrange this equation to work out values in questions. So for example work out u or v or a or s. So when an object has constant acceleration, SUVAT equations, the equations of motion can be used to work out values of the object moving. So you've got your two equations here and you can see that on the screen as shown. Now remember, our assumption in these equations is that the acceleration stays constant throughout the journey. Now the most common example of a constant acceleration is when an object is falling due to gravity because acceleration is caused by the value of gravity g which is 9.81 meters per second squared. Now again, in examination questions, it's common for you to use these equations to work out the acceleration and then be asked to work out the resultant force that causes the acceleration. So you could use either equation 1 or equation 2 to calculate the acceleration and then we can work out the resultant force by using the Newton's second law of motion, F equals MA. So let's summarise what we've learned in today's lesson. Velocity is a speed in a given direction, and acceleration is a change of velocity per second. The average acceleration of an object can be calculated using the equation acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the time taken, and an object that slows down is decelerating, and you should be able to estimate the magnitude of everyday accelerations. So, if you have been successful and learnt in this lesson, you should be able to define the term acceleration, calculate the term, calculate values of acceleration for an object, and finally calculate further values of an object's motion using SUVAT. So thank you very much for watching this lesson on acceleration, which is part of the forces topic in GCSE Separate Science Physics. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, have a lovely day.